All right, I'm sitting here with Charlie. How you doing? Hi. Uh, just want to tell me a little bit about yourself, like you know where you're from, just a little history. Um, from Bucks County, and been getting high, Kensington for like five years. Okay. Twenty eight years old. Um, yeah. So, have you been on the street for like, these last five years straight? No, for like the last two two years. Two years. So you've actually been homeless for the last two years. Yeah. Okay. And what's your uh, drug of choice? Um, dope, Xanax, and coke. Okay. All right. Um, have you been getting high long enough that where you did the uh the original the regular the real heroin the real dope? Yeah. Not not long though. It wasn't oh. around long, but I I mean I did in the okay. beginning. Okay. Now did what did you? Recognize the the changeover to fentanyl when it was happening. Mm -hmm. You did. Yeah, I was here for when it changed more to fentanyl to trank to. I mean, that's what it is, carfentanil or xylazine, something yeah, like that. Yeah, xylazine. They're saying it is now. <clears throat> now, do you like the high this stuff better than the like the original dope was? No, I just like the legs. Like it lasts longer. Okay. You know what I mean? What this stuff? Oh, that. But this stuff lasts longer for you. Yeah, like, oh. I mean, if you if you get like fentanyl and the trank, like the fentanyl is more, I guess the rut. I'm not sure which one it is, but I know whenever I do trank, like, I can be good for like a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, it's like it doesn't really get me well if I just do fentanyl. All right. So, the, so the the withdrawal is just from the xylazine then. Like you, you need it. Like it, so you're saying if you did a, a bag and it didn't have enough of the trank in it, you'd still be sick. Yeah, I think I'm more hooked on the trank. trank yeah. Now, would you say when everyone says it's an epidemic, a crisis down here, would you say the the trank is is more of what's causing the problems than the fentanyl? Because <laughs> you see all the sores and all that. Yeah. Yeah, all the sores. And I know, like, two people now who have been out here just as long as me and didn't, like, they didn't go to jail, they didn't go to rehab, and they died from, like, an overdose, which is just really weird because, you know what I mean, they have habits just, like, you know what I mean? Like, they get high off everything else we do, and, like, no one's, like, if you're using steady, you're not really overdosing, but I guess, like, it's on some people, they are now. I mean, I know two people that died from it, that was just, like, a shock because it's not like they went to jail and, like, had clean time or anything like that. There's like they OD. Right. Like what? Like, yeah, my, it's. I guess the amount is so small. They just you know put way too much in one bag by accident or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it, your friend was just telling me about uh, a friend of his died just from using a, a pipe with fentanyl in, in the crack pipe. Yeah, that is crazy. I know. Um, have you? Do you have any desire to get off the streets to get clean? Or are you? I'm not saying okay with this, but, you know, okay with where you're at. Yeah, like, eventually, but it's not right now. Not right just, now. Yeah. yeah, I get it. You just got to be honest with yourself, you know? It took me 18 years of this pain and dumbness and yeah. craziness. Yeah, I just don't feel... I just don't want to stop. I, mean, I've, I, I don't know. Everyone makes me feel guilty for that, but... You like to get high? Yeah. Well, you know, people like to get high. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Now, are you an IV drug user? Yeah. And, and I'm not sure if I asked you this yet or not. Do you have sores? Do you deal with the the open sores? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I had a whole bunch on my arm that healed up. Now, I don't really have... I mean, I have, like, one or two, but I don't have as many because I've been going in, like, my neck and stuff, and I don't get any, like, sores there, but... Okay. Yeah, but most of them are healed. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, it's just... It's, like, so many people that I talk to have... Sores, like look at this one. This oh, it's, it's honestly, I, I mean, I get it. They're out here, but it's fucking foul most of the time. Like, yeah, I know. I see this shit all the time. We'll be sitting here and like the wind's blowing, and we're like, get the fuck. You can just like, smell, right? Yeah, like get over there. It's like it's, it's like rude. Yeah. They don't change their bandages. They're just sitting and soaked, fucking. Uh, I don't. I. Yeah, now you think a lot of the, the sores is just because they're not cleaning enough. Yeah, you know, like a lot. Do we think a lot of them would be a lot less yeah, they, bad if they kept up with themselves? Is what I'm be, trying to say. They'd be more manageable, but now I think they're still going to happen because people are missing shots with blood in it, and mm -hmm. it's causing like 
I think it's like immersive, flesh eating, bacteria yeah. shit. Well, that's what happens. They say is like I guess uh, it's a vasoconstrictor, so it takes wherever you shoot up, it, less blood goes there. So that there's not enough blood go, that go there to heal the wounds. So you're not getting enough blood cells, or white blood cells there. To... I've tried to hit myself mm-hmm. in places where I've gotten sores before, mm-hmm. and I can't hit, and I'll take the needle out. And no blood comes out of my arm. Wow. Yeah, so it's like, okay. It's, it, that, that's what it does, I guess. Now, did you have problems hitting at all, like, with the regular H? Or was that IV back then when you were doing that? Um, yeah, it was IV. Okay. But, um, no, not really. But, yeah, and I wasn't doing coke or anything. I was just doing heroin. Mm-hmm. It's probably for, like, a year. Okay. Oh, so that, but when you were doing it for a year and then it went into fentanyl is what you're saying? Yeah, like, really quick. Okay. Wow, he started a crazy time to get high. So, w- were you down here when um, the Emerald City thing was going on, like the the tent city on? Oh yeah. Were, okay, you were down here then. Yeah. Now, so a lot of people that I talk to say when they broke that up is when Kensington really went crazy, like the PUA money and then that breaking up is when it. Went um, nuts. Yeah, definitely with the uh, PUA money, but I mean. I guess because it was just like an overload of like more people and like more of the public areas, like the park. I mean, there's always people there, but like it was just like extra overload on the streets. People sleeping on the sidewalks a lot more. I don't it, know. It's so wild to me. Like when I used to come down here, it used to be the scariest thing in the world being a white person coming to cop drugs here because the cops knew you were, you know? Yeah. And you had this get in, get your drugs, and get out of the neighborhood quick. But now it's so wild, like, seeing people at... It's, like, mostly white people. Yeah. But even... And you see, like, the, you know, a, a syringe hanging out of someone's neck when you're walking down the street. It's, it's like, it's wild getting used to that. It's crazy to think that, like, they let you... Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's allowed to go on. Mm-hmm. I mean, not necessarily allowed to go on. I guess there's just, like, so much. It's like, what the fuck do they do? But any this ain't anywhere else. There's no place like this, I feel like. People from New York, like New Orleans, like any like all the places like where there's hoods and stuff. Yeah. They're like there's nothing really like Kensington. It's like I have people from literally around the world that watch and it's like that is America. Like what the fuck? Yeah. And like I try and tell people it's only a small section like of Philly. Yeah. Kensington. Yep. Maybe a mile long from let's say Huntington mm-hmm. to Erie. Or yeah. Sedgley, maybe even. Yeah, it's all literally right on like that L span of like yeah. going from like Tioga to to maybe Huntington. Huntington. Yeah, and it's just that little strip, and but it is maybe the craziest place in, in the world, yeah. in America. And I feel like they they're trying to contain it and leave it like that because yeah. maybe like I don't know, keeps it. Contained, maybe. Yeah. Well, even when I remember, like, we used to go underneath these uh, the train tracks back up near Tuscaloosa, and yeah, you know, B and Master. There was a train tracks you go under, or A and Master, I think it was. Yeah. And so they they uh, arrest people now for going down there. Like it's like they almost want people in the public doing it in a way. Not want want them, but it's like they're they're just okay with okay with it right now, which is wild to me. Yep. Now, is there anything? <clears throat> that the listen people that are watching this I have a P.O. box they like to send stuff is there anything that you might need I know your, your friend said a tent want to try and get a tent that way that, that's like the main thing yeah definitely a tent alright um, do you need wound care stuff or your, are your sores bad enough or you want me to bring you wound care stuff uh, yeah I mean cause they I mean they do pop up once in a while mostly right. I feel like I need Shoes and clothes. All right. Well, what size shoes? I'm like eight and a half. Eight and a half. Okay. And then like, uh, what like tight stuff like that? Yeah, tight sweat jackets or because at nighttime it's just it gets so cold. And, okay. You know, and then now that we got our tent taken, it's like falling asleep on the street. It's like even a jacket. It's like helps. Yeah. Okay. Everything is everything is stolen. <laughs> yeah, I was that just because you, you you pass out or you're not out so hard, right? It's just yeah. so easy to get stuff stolen. Even when you don't, you my phone got stolen the other day when I was in 7-Eleven because my pocket was just open. 
And they were like, they're so slick, these people. Oh, they're like an actual pickpocket. Yeah. Wow. He, like, he was like, just coming close to me. And I know, I just, I know it was him. He was the person, because I, I seen him walk right, like, near me. And I was paying and doing something. Yeah. And it was just in my pocket right before that. So, like, yeah. That is so wild. They're good. Yeah. They, they practice this shit. Well, and it's like, uh, people that I interview and I try and keep up with, like, they'll give me their phone number. But then they, <laughs> that phone will get stolen a day or two later. Yep. Yeah, so that's how, like that's what you say about a week. You guys normally hold on phones for. Yeah. And then what do you do? Go to the um the assurance wireless people. Is that like? That's what we. That's what I need to do. Call and I can't. But most of the time, I'm just buying a phone for five bucks off somebody in the way. Oh, so that's how it is. I'm just you can get buy one for and just you just use the uh, Wi-Fi wherever you can go. Yep, Xfinity. Okay, so it's so that's what the for a, a smartphone down here is five, five, ten bucks, something like that. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's good if you need to get back on the internet or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I will. Uh, I'm going to be back down tomorrow. I'll bring you the wound care stuff then, and then hopefully next in a week or so, whenever we'll get you clothes and some sneakers, something like that. Thank you. All right. Thanks again.